Have you thought about buying an electric car? Here's one that you might not have considered, the Volkswagen e-Golf. Next on Now You Know. So if you've been on this channel before, you know that we love Tesla. We love the cars and we love the company. I mean, we love electric vehicles in general and Teslas are the best. But they're expensive. If you're looking at this one, you're looking at somewhere between sixty dollars to $70,000 starting price. So that's something that someone like me can't afford. You could go for a Nissan Leaf and those start around $37,000. But if you get them used, like I did, you can get it down to about like nine grand, which is pretty great. But it is a leaf. It looks like this. And maybe you don't wanna be caught dead driving something like this. I understand that. So I think that there's a good middle ground. And that is the Volkswagen e-Golf. It drives great. It has the same range as my leaf. And it looks just like a regular Golf. You can find one for about twelve to $14,000 in the used market, which is a pretty good price, especially for kind of a step up from a Leaf. So unlike my Leaf, which makes sort of a whining sound when it's moving at low speeds to alert pedestrians, the e-Golf kind of sounds like this. So how's this car handle? car handles really great. It feels really light, it feels really powerful, and it just feels like you can put the car wherever you want to put it, you know, within a second, basically. The suspension really gives it a nice feel, and the steering wheel is, is like, very thin, so you can get a really good grip around it. How's it compared to the Nissan Leaf in handling? The Leaf handles, I mean, the Leaf is pretty peppy for the way that it looks, but I'd say that this has a bit more pep, and also uh, I feel a little bit better taking it around turns. How's this controller in terms of putting it to forward and reverse and all that? Um, so it works a lot like, I think, probably a normal Golf. Uh, I haven't seen a real normal Golf, but it feels like, uh, you know, your normal car. Um, there's a couple key differences. You have uh, three different levels of regenerative braking while you're in drive mode. So this goes from a coast to a fairly strong uh, regenerative braking, um, but then you can switch it into B mode and that gives you just an extra level of braking sort of what you would if you were to encounter a stop sign up until the last point where you're gonna to have to apply the actual brake. So one of the funky things about this car is that it has dials, even though it's an electric car. Um, so you have this, this electric tachometer, as it were. So if I increase power, it goes up, and if when I regenerate, it, it goes back. I don't think they needed to do that, but I think it it's looks just like a normal Golf. And they did everything from the, the battery fuel gauge to the, the power, like how much power you have. If you get down to really low battery power, um, you'll get less output from, from the motors. Uh, one thing that I do like is uh, right from the stock, I can adjust and see what I want to see in the middle. So like I could see my average consumption in miles per kilowatt hour. I could see my range. I could see my travel time and my distance or my average speed or my actual speed. I kind of leave it, like leaving it on speed so I, I don't have to actually look at a dial to see my speed. I can just get it in a digital readout here, which is quite nice. So the nav system on the e-Golf compared to the Tesla is, I'd say, a little lackluster. Obviously, you have a smaller screen. Uh, the touchscreen is not as responsive. It feels... I want to say like a Palm Pilot from the early 2000s as compared to, you know, more of the iPhone feeling uh, touchscreen in the Tesla. All right, so this is my good friend Jerry. Uh, he also has an e-Golf, uh, the blue one behind us. I really enjoy it. I'd like a little more range, but I really enjoy the car because it's, um, one of the things I really like is uh, the fact that it's just like a standard Golf in that uh, no space was robbed by the batteries, um, whereas some, some uh, electric cars have, it's just a sedan, and what they do is take some of the trunk space away to put the battery in, whereas the battery in this is all underneath and out of the way. So is, um, was the e-Golf your first electric car? It's my first electric car, yeah. And so what made you um, go for that as opposed to like a Leaf or something in the, well, that range? Well, I mean, I really, I, I owned a Golf before this, mm -hmm. a regular uh, 
internal combustion engine golf, you know, that old style <laughs> stuff that burns uh, fossil fuel. It, yeah, yeah I have gas in it. So as I was turning that in, I test drove this and I really enjoyed it right from the start. Mm -hmm. The pickup in it, the, the way it looks, what it can carry, uh, I was really taken by it. And I knew that my lifestyle had changed so that I could easily have a car that didn't do 200 miles. Well, I general. like the fact that the Golf is a hatchback. It's a full roof height hatchback. A lot of hatchbacks, they if you look at them, they have this slope to them, which really looks great, but you, know, you want to put anything tall in them, it's hard to do because yeah. the, ro the, the opening is pretty small, whereas Golf's opening is full height and also the seats fully recline. I can take the front wheel off my bike and put it right in the car. So nice. I really like that. It handles well. It's comfortable. It's very, it's, it's the perfect. same as a regular, it's a VW. Right, I mean, right. It's, it's a, a VW. German engineered Exactly. Car. In fact, I've seen the, uh, a video where they assemble these and on the same assembly line, they put either a gas powertrain in it or an electric powertrain on the very same assembly line, so. So this car gets 84 miles uh, Roughly. EPA. Has range anxiety been an issue for you? Absolutely. With this car, you, need, you, you just need to be very careful. And in the winter time, I mean, I do things like don't even run the heater, I just run the seat heaters because mm -hmm. the minute you turn on the heater in the car, you might lose 10 miles of range. You know, in the winter time, uh, or even in the summer, if you use the air conditioning, again, drops the range. Right. So, so it's you... really a in-town commuter car, or maybe if a person has wherever they work, they can charge it during the day, mm -hmm. hey, that would be ideal. So do people notice that it's an electric car when you pull up at a, at a parking lot or when you're driving Easy down the street? Easy answer to that, no. Okay. I mean, if you look at an e-golf, yours or mine, yep. It looks... It's got a little symbol on the sides as e-golf, and on the back there's another little symbol, but I don't think anybody notices the fact that it's an electric car. And so the quietness of it, no one ever notices that? Nope. Okay. Nope. Because it does I... have that sort of pedestrian warning growl to it. It sounds it, almost like it, an engine. It does, okay. yeah. But I don't... Nobody's ever remarked to me, oh, you have an electric car. So even Not when people soul. have people gotten in the car and noticed, yeah. is that when they don't doesn't seem to be they don't I've notice had people ride with me and wow. they don't I, ha, I have to tell them it's an electric car. Wow. <laughs> so you are going to be turning in this e golf yes. and you're going to be getting a bolt. Um, what's your main impetus for that? Uh, I like the idea of the range. The 200 plus mile range really is nice, and it's the same form factor. Oh, it's a hatchback. Because it, it's a hatchback. I see. So uh, that's what fold down rear seats. So there you go. Now, if Volkswagen had come out, already had a car that had the same amount of range, I'd probably go with them because I really like the car. Um, so what's the maintenance like on this e-Golf? Have you had to take it in for anything? I think they rotated the tires pretty much. That was with the at least this e-Golf. That was a free service. Okay. So uh, really, there's nothing else to do. You know, no oil to change. And how do you like being able to charge at home? Oh, great. Yeah. It's like having a gas pump in your garage right. <laughs> with, without the fumes. Right. So the VW has a pretty interesting door latch on the back. It's the VW symbol itself, which is kind of cool. And then it's got a full hatch. Also underneath here is uh, you know, where you can keep your charging cables and other such items. So it's pretty spacious, you'd say? Okay, so here's one thing that we just sort of found out, which I think is pretty cool. So this, if you push this, turns red, and then if you push it, you now have a through hole. <laughs> so you can stick stuff like all the way through the car. That's pretty cool. And you'd still have use of the two back seats. That's pretty cool for a sporty car. All right, so, I just found this cool feature in the car and I, I really, really like it. Because I mean, if I'm sitting in the back seat and the driver's like, hey, would you hand me that tape measure? I would have to, you know, reach around and I can't, I can't see. I don't know where it is. With this, I can see it. I can reach around to grab anything in the back pretty comfortably and hand it off whatever I need to do. I, I don't know, I really like that. That's cool. Okay, so I'm sitting here in the back seat. It's, um, you know, it's not the roomiest of back seats, but it's by far not the least roomy I've ever been in. 
Um, I'd say this is sort of par for the course for a, for a smallish hatchback. Yeah, I like it. It's comfortable. Seat belt. It's got the uh, cup holders, armrest, and the pole to the, to the trunk. I like that. It's a cool feature. So if you're sitting in the back, I guess you get your own little vanity light. I don't know, I think that's kind of cool. Either one, you don't have to turn on the whole dome light if someone wants to read a book or something. Yeah, I'd say the middle seat, definitely good if you need to stuff a bunch of people in your car, but it's definitely not good for, you know, a long trip or anything like that. You have to straddle this hump. I don't know why the hump's here, because uh, there's no, I don't think there's a drive shaft that goes through. Yeah, it's not rear wheel drive, so. So, I mean, the fit and finish of this car is really nice. It's, you know, German quality. Um, Sounds like a good car door. Um, so if we take a look under the hood, it's uh, it's kind of cute. This this cover is cute. There's nothing under it. Uh, it. They tried to make it look like an engine, I think. Yeah, that's all you should probably have to really worry about. No, is that it? Um, I don't know. Is there any more footage? Um, it doesn't look like it. I think that's all the footage. Um, oh! Oh, hey guys! Hey, what's um, going on? Yeah, I think that's the end of the video. Yeah, I, it seems like uh, that's it. Okay, so. so um, I guess thank you so much for watching this yeah. video. Um, please remember to like and subscribe. Yeah, comments below if you have any questions for comments. Other viewers if there's anyone about out there e who drives an e-golf yeah. and like has thoughts about it, leave those in the comments below. Yeah. Um, and uh, I guess we'll see you next see time. See you next time. I'm Bobby. I'm oh, Brent. Is and this blurry You're now? watching. <laughs> what are you watching? What are we watching? All right, you can <laughs> just go. Okay, click on click on our next video, alright? <laughs> or or subscribe. Whatever you want. Alright. See you guys later. Bye. It's like some Sesame Street stuff <laughs> right there. I think that's the perfect it's, amount of awkward and cringy. Oh, it's still wrong. Yeah. It was very cringy. <laughs> yeah. I do not